Hello and welcome to TNT Gaming Channel, I'm your host Toma and today we're taking a look at the latest free-to-play offering to grace the catalogues of Steam. It's the aptly named World of Battles. This blood-soaked RTS comes courtesy of games developer Frogwares and depicts a war-torn world where nations struggle and vie for dominance over one another. To say this game is an RTS is completely accurate, but World of Battles attempts to offer a huge portion of MMO alongside the RTS roots making it fairly unique to others in the genre. Not to mention the RPG slant on your own personal character, allowing you to upgrade and develop your warrior as you obtain higher levels. I'm curious to see whether all these various gaming angles thrown together into one game can really work, so let's take a look. The first stage is to design your very own character, to lead your horde of warriors into battle. There are 9 races in total, but not all of them are unlocked yet, so your choices are limited slightly. However, you still have more than enough choice, so that you don't miss those locked races. The traditional races are there, Human, Dwarf, Dark Elf, Orc, Undead, etc etc, and whilst you may say that this is boring tried and tested formulas, I would just like to point out that there's no Panda race, and for that, I for one am thankful. Once you decide on the race you wish to take into battle with you, given the character a well thought out name and chosen your banner, you get a very easy run of the mill tutorial. Once that's out of the way, you start to unlock the rest of the game as you go. You have single player missions against AI which allow you to earn XP and coin to upgrade units or buy new ones if you're feeling particularly flush with cash. As you progress through the game, you unlock more slots for your bands of warriors like weapon slots, armour upgrades, the usual stuff that make your army change from green grunts into hardened warriors of legend. I will just say at this stage, one minor issue about the single player, it is very basic and there's no real storyline so be prepared to run through very similar missions over and over again. I understand why it's like this though, this game is designed for multiplayer so why spend time in single player right? So I'm not going to hold it against Frogwares. Single player is basic but that's just enough to keep me entertained and besides it's all in a run up for the you know, full on multiplayer so I won't argue. Oh and the AI is pretty awful at points. I mean I'm literally shooting this band of dwarves continuously and they don't even care. I can see my general now. Give the order for the men to cover themselves in the scent of Lady Dwarf. That should get their attention. If it doesn't work well we could go home I guess. Have a cup of tea or something. I think I have some jammy dodgers back at the cave if anyone's interested. Moving on from that weird situation Let's talk about the graphics. You can zoom right in on the action, so the graphics get a big tick from me. The detail of the design of the character is pretty cool, and although the battle scenes aren't as dynamic as, say, Total War skirmishes, it's still pretty decent. The maps and locations are not huge, but big enough to give you room and actually come up with battle tactics. If you actually work together as a clan or multiplayer, you could in theory get some teamwork going. The same can't be said for general multiplayer, most of the time it's just a massive bundle in the centre of the map, but on occasion I've been in a team of randoms actually trying to work out a plan, so it does exist. The game mechanic is fairly basic, it's rock, paper, scissors in a nutshell. Pikemen beat cavalry, cavalry beat light infantry, light infantry beat pikemen, so keep this in mind and you won't go far wrong. Moving away from the battles and the multiplayer for a second, I wanted to say something about this game being free and having a paying shop system. I was like many before playing this game, I'm sure. I thought it would be a pay to win scenario. Those with money could buy the best troops and those without suffer with basic units that can barely walk or carry a weapon, not to mention being actually useful in a war. And I'm pleased to say I was proved wrong in, mo in the most part. To unlock some useful units it costs say 500 gold pieces. Doing one single player mission will reward you with roughly 275 around that area. So do two of these solo missions and you have a new unit. I actually think you could put together a quite respectable army without spending a penny of extra cash, so good times. So ultimately, if you ever played Warhammer, enjoy Total War, watched Lord of the Rings, or secretly dreamed of being a bloodthirsty warlord and design the armour you would wear when you should have been doing that spreadsheet for work, which I, I totally haven't, then this game is for you. It's free to download and really doesn't need your actual cash to be played properly. The fight system is basic but stays entertaining throughout and every time you win online you feel like you've actually helped, you've been part of the battle. 
as ever, download this game and try it for yourself. It is free, so you've got absolutely nothing to lose. Thanks for watching, and remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Leave me any comments below and let me know your thoughts on World of Battles. Failing that, send us an email at tntgamingchannel at hotmail.co.uk. Laters!